Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a classic tank top. A tried and true classic tank tops are perfect for any warm weather fit. This one's no different, sporting clean ribbing, a snazzy overlapping collar, and not much else. Peak minimal aesthetic. Speaking of, if you're a modern minimalist who's into crochet, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the most modern crochet tutorials and patterns fit for any occasion with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 165 grams of yarn and that's 360 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us when you are reaching for a fragrance, do you prefer flowery scents or sweet smells? I love eating sweets, but not so much smelling like sweets. My go-to is always flowery. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. And half double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small and you can adjust for your size. We explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making a chain starting one inch underneath our underarm down to where we want the bottom of this top to be, so you can make this cropped or full length. I would like for mine to be full length, so I'm going to start by making a chain 60 and that is 14 inches or 36 centimeters. So now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our first row, which is going to be a half double crochet row. So we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that is just our turning chain. Now we're going to yarn over, preparing for a half double. Insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook. Pull through for three loops on our hook, then yarn over. Pull through all three. That is our first half double. Let's do one more. Yarn over into that following chain. Pull through pull through all three. Continue with one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. We've put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. Now into that last chain, we're going to do an increase of two half double crochets. So yarn over. Into that last chain, we're going to insert with one half double, and then into that same last chain with a second half double crochet. Our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So to get started on that, we're going to chain one, that does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and flip our work. And we're now going to be doing back loop slip stitches to get a really pretty ribbing. So we're going to start by finding that first stitch from our previous row and insert only into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch's back loop, insert, yarn over, and gently pull through everything. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and remember not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the falling rows can be too tight to work into. So we've just made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitch row. Now from here we're going to be alternating between a back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row, so let's get started on our back loop half double. We're all going to chain two, getting started for our half double crochet row, that's our turning chain, and flip our work. From here it's going to be just like the first row, but within the back loops, so yarn over, Find that first stitch from our previous row and insert into that back loop, pull through, pull through all three, and again, yarn over, into that next stitch's back loop, insert, pull through, pull through all three. Continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. We are back, and we should all have one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. Now let's finish off our third row by doing an increase of two back loop half double crochets. So into that last stitch, insert into that back loop with one half double, and then into that same back loop with a second half double crochet. Our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, just like the previous one. So chain one, 
flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we will be continuing to repeat our two previous rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on an increase of two, and then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. We're continuing to repeat these two rows until we have an underarm portion that can stretch, because it does have some stretch to it, from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm. Then I'll meet you back right after back loop slip stitch row. I am back with the first portion of our underarm. I have a total of four rows. My width is roughly an inch or two centimeters, and that is unstretched. Now from here, we're gonna continue on with our underarm portion, but with some more increases so that we have a really smooth curve that leads up to our shoulder. So since we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row, we should all be along the bottom. So what we're gonna do is put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. All right, we are back. We put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. Now we're going to do an increase of three back loop half double crochets. So all that's going to be is three back loop half doubles into that same last stitch. So there's one, there's two, and then there's three half double crochets. Now from here, we are going to need to increase into our back loop slip stitch row as well. So how we're gonna do that is chain one, that is going to count as a stitch, and then chain a second chain, so two in total. That second chain is gonna count as our turning chain. Now we're going to flip our work. From here, we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that second chain that we made into that back loop. So we're gonna skip one into that second chain's back loop, insert with a slip stitch, and that's it. From here, continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And at the end of this row, we're going to do our back loop half double crochet row that now ends on an increase of three. And we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we now have an underarm portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to about mid collarbone. And then I'll meet you guys back right after back loop half double crochet row. All right, so we are back. I have just finished up the second half of my underarm and now we're gonna get started on the shoulder. But just to let you guys know, I have a total of seven rows. My width is roughly two inches or five centimeters unstretched. Now from here, since we all should have ended along the top, we're now going to make a chain that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder. Now I need roughly four inches or 10 centimeters, so I made a chain of 18. Then once we have our chain, we're going to get started on the following row in a row sequence, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So once we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert into that chain, yarn over and gently pull through everything. From here, we're gonna continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Once we reach the body portion, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. I'll meet you back at the end of this row. All right, so we are back. Our first shoulder row is all finished. Now from here, all we're gonna do is back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we have a shoulder portion that reaches about two inches right before we reach the base of our neck. We wanna leave those two inches because of the collar that we're going to have. Since we all should be along the bottom, all we're gonna do is chain two, flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work again, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. I'll meet you guys back once we have the shoulder portion all finished up, right after we finish up a slip stitch row, so along the bottom. We are back and our shoulder portion is now all finished. I have a total of 12 rows. My width is now three inches or eight centimeters unstretched, and now we're going to get started on our neckline. So what we're going to want to do from here is insert our stitch marker where we want our neckline to start. So I would like for my neckline to be a little bit deeper because we are going to have that border. So I inserted my stitch marker into the 20th stitch from the top, that's just about four and a half inches or 11 centimeters, and that's right at about mid chest. But if you'd like to cover more, insert your stitch marker higher, or if you would like to show a little bit more, insert your stitch marker lower. From here, once we have our stitch marker in place, we're going to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving three stitches right before our stitch marker. So we are back. I made my way all the way up with my back loop half doubles. I have left one, two, three stitches before my stitch marker, and now we're gonna do a decrease of three. So all together, we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last back loop, pull through, and last back loop, and pull through. We now have one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook, so yarn over, 
pull through all five, and that is our decrease of three half double crochets. Now for the neck, we're going to need to decrease into our slip stitch row as well, so we're all gonna chain one and flip our work. Now to do our decrease of two back loop slip stitches, we're gonna insert our hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through into that second stitch's back loop, then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and we are going to be decreasing into the following half double crochet as well. So at the end of the row, chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches. So we are back and we are nearly finished with our first three rows for our neckline. We just finished up a back loop half double crochet row, but we left the last three stitches, so we're gonna do another decrease of three back loop half doubles together. So all together, we're just gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last, pull through, and then into that last, pull through for five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all five, and that is our half double crochet row. Since we're here, we might as well decrease into our slip stitch row as well, so just chain one, flip our work, and to do our decrease, we're gonna insert our hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, into that next stitch's back loop, then yarn over, pull through everything. Now from here, we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have a portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to mid chest. And I'll meet you back right after we finish up a half double crochet row. All right, I am back and I have just finished up the first half of my neckline. I have a total of 21 rows. My width is roughly five inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to do our middle row and then mirror everything we did here on the other side. So our middle row is just going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So all we're gonna do is chain one and flip our work. So make your way down putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. But when we have a few stitches finished up, I just wanna remind you to insert a stitch marker into the top of this row, just so we know where the middle is going to be when it comes to doing our collar. Now, when we reach the end of the row, we're all going to chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one so that now we can do an increase into that last stitch. So we have just finished up our middle row and we have made our way up with our back loop half double crochet row on the other side. And now we're going to do an increase of three half doubles because we did a decrease of three half doubles on this side. So that's going to be pretty simple. All we're gonna do is yarn over and into that last stitches back loop, insert with one, with two, and then with three half double crochets. Now we're going to need to do an increase into our slip stitch row as well, since we did a decrease into our slip stitch rows on this side. These increases are gonna be done the same way that we did it for the second underarm portion. So we're gonna start with a chain one. That first chain is gonna count as a stitch, and then chain a second chain. That chain counts as our turning chain. So a total of two chains in total and flip our work. So two chains in total and flip our work. And all we're gonna do is insert our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop. So we're gonna skip one into that chain, pull through everything and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows. So it's a back loop half double crochet row that ends on an increase of three and then a back loop slip stitch row that starts with an increase as well. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of decreased rows that we have for our neckline that we just did, making sure that we're not counting that middle row. Once we have that amount of rows finished up, I will meet you guys back so we can work straight into our shoulder from there. All right, so I am back. I have just finished up the increase portion of my neckline. I now have a total of 31 rows. My width is roughly seven inches or 18 centimeters now. And now we're going to do our shoulder portion. Now this shoulder portion is going to be done pretty much the same way as our first shoulder portion. So what we're gonna do, since we all should have ended along the top, is make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our neckline. For those of you that had my numbers, I inserted my stitch marker into the 20th stitch. So on this side, I made a chain 20. Then from here, we're going to do our back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for our first shoulder portion. When we do, I'll meet you back so we can finish up our front panel with our two underarm portions. We are back, our second shoulder portion is finished. Now from here, we're gonna get started on our underarm. But just to let you guys know, I have a total of 36 rows. My width now is eight inches or roughly 20 centimeters. And what we're going to do next is insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to our shoulders. 
So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 18. So for this side, from the top, I counted down 18 stitches and inserted my stitch marker. Since we all should be along the bottom, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches right before our stitch marker. So we've made our way all the way back up, leaving three stitches right before our stitch marker for our first underarm row. We're now going to do a decrease of three back loop half doubles. So yarn over into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last back loop, pull through, last back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all of our loops, and now this row is finished. Now since we are getting started on the second underarm portion that we did on this side, we did do an increase into our slip stitch row as well. So now we're going to do a decrease into our following slip stitch row. So we're all going to chain one and flip. And to do our decrease, we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, next stitch's back loop, pull through all three, and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We are now going to be continuing to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows that we have for the second underarm portion that we did. I'll meet you guys back once we have those amount of rows finished up, and just as a quick tip, we should all end right after a half double crochet row. So the first portion of our underarm is all finished. I have a total of 39 rows. My width is now roughly 9 inches or 23 centimeters. Now we're going to finish off our front panel with our second underarm portion. So since we all should have ended right after a back loop half double crochet row, we're all going to do a slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases because we did not do increases into our back loop slip stitch row that we started off with on the other side of our underarm. So we're going to make our way all the way down. At the end of that slip stitch row, chain 2, flip our work one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving two stitches at the very end, and then we can do a decrease of two together. So we've just finished up our back loop slip stitch row, and also made our way back up with our back loop half double crochet rows, now leaving the last two stitches. So now we're going to do a decrease of two. So yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four. Then from here, we're going to continue to repeat these two rows for the same amount of rows that we did for the first underarm portion when we got started on our piece. Everyone's last row should be a half double crochet, and once we have that last row, do a chain up of one and cut. We are back, and the entirety of my front panel is finished. I now have a total of roughly 10 inches or 25 centimeters, unstretched. I did do a chain up of one and cut right after my last row. Now from here, we're going to be making a back panel, and the back panel is going to be done pretty much the same way as the front panel. So all it's going to be is the same underarm portion as the front panel. Then once we have the underarm, all we're going to do is make a chain for the same amount of chains that led up to our shoulder, and then we're going to do back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet rows for the same amount of rows that we have from our first shoulder row across our chest to our last shoulder row. So it's going to be solid. Then right after that, we're going to be doing the exact same underarm portion that we ended off our front panel with. When we have the same amount of rows, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. Now that we have both front and back panel finished, we're now going to seam the sides. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out. So all the ribbing for the front panel is faced up, all the ribbing for the back panel is faced down. Then we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, and then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. Then pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop, first stitch into the back panel, insert into the back loop. Yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Let's do that again. First stitch into the front panel, insert into the front loop, first stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. Alright, so we have all just finished up seaming our sides, and now we're going to seam our shoulder. Our shoulder seam is going to be a single crochet row, so we're going to want it to be on the inside, so let's flip our work wrong side out, and then we're going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Then all we're going to do is put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then two single crochet into every side half double crochet row. So everyone's first row should be a side slip stitch row, so find that top loop and insert your hook into the front panel, 
same top loop within the back panel, and then we're going to single crochet around everything. Let's do the next one. Everyone's next side row should be a side half double crochet row, so find that top loop, insert into the front panel, next top loop, insert into the back panel, and single crochet. And since it's a side half double, we're going to be putting one more single crochet into that top loop. So into the front panel and into the back panel. This one should be easier since everything should already be gathered and single crochet. That's pretty much it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into within the front panel. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, repeat on the other side, and then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the collar. So now that everything is all seamed up, the next we're going to do is single crochet along our neckline. So first things first, let's all make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the stitches that we have along the back panel. And all we're going to do is put two single crochets into every side half double, one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then once we reach the front panel, one single crochet into every stitch, and then down the neckline, continuing to two single crochets into every side half double, one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. So let's just do the first few. My first side row is this half double crochet row, so I'm going to find that top loop and insert with one, and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. My following side row is a side slip stitch row, so I'm just going to find that top loop, insert with one single crochet. And we're just going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around. And just as a really quick tip, once we reach the middle row within the front panel, we do want to be inserting our stitch marker into that one single crochet that's going to be worked into the top of that side slip stitch row, just so we continue to know where the middle is. When you make your way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back. We have just finished up our single crochet row along our neckline, and now we're just going to work on the width of our collar. So first things first, we're all going to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, then we're all going to be inserting our hook into the stitch that's nearest to our middle stitch marker stitch within the front panel that is to the right and only in through that front loop. So just insert your hook in through that stitch. Next, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. There we go. And we're going to pull through. From here, since everyone's work should be flipped right side out, we're going to be working on the left side of our stitch marker and we're going to start by putting one front loop single crochet into the stitches for the width that we'd like for our collar to be, making sure that it is an even number of stitches. Now I'd like for my collar to be relatively small, just about an inch or two centimeters. So starting with that stitch marker stitch, working towards the left, I'm going to be doing four front loop slip stitches. So I'm going to start with a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just for security. All we're going to do is find that first stitch that our stitch marker is in, we're going to insert only in through that front loop, then just yarn over and pull through everything. We do want to make sure that we're keeping our stitch marker into that same stitch as well. Let's do it again. Into that following stitch, insert only in through that front loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and since I only want four, I will be doing the following two stitches with you. Into that next stitch's front loop, yarn over, pull through everything, into that next stitch's front loop only, yarn over, pull through everything. Now that we have the width of the collar that we want, we're going to chain one and flip our work. So our work is now flipped, and we're now going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch all the way back down. So we should all end up with the same amount of stitches that we just made, so four for me. So find that first stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop with a back loop slip stitch, into that next stitch with another back loop slip stitch, and continue this until we reach the base. So now that I have my slip stitches, we're now going to connect it into the base. And all we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base and insert only into that back loop. So this is my next stitch. I'm going to slip stitch into that back loop to connect it. So we're going to insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Now that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, we just need it to connect it. Then we need to work our way up to the following row, so slip stitch into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, that slip stitch also doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. Then from here, all we're going to do is put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. So finding the last slip stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, pull through everything, next stitch is back loop, and pull through everything. Continue this until we reach the end of the row. When we do, chain one, flip your work, 
put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again and I'll meet you back at the base just once more. So now that we're back at the base, we should all have one, two, three rows nearly finished. We're just going to connect it. So finding that first stitch, we're going to insert into that back loop, pull through everything to connect it, and then to work our way up to the following row, find that next stitch's back loop, pull through everything, flip our work, and continue on with our back loop slip stitch rows, making our way all the way around. Now once we reach our last available stitch on this side of our collar, I'll meet you back just so I can show you how we're going to be working into those available stitches we left for ourselves. Alright, so I am back. I've made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows. And now, since I just worked into that last available stitch that I had on this side of my collar when we got started, all we're going to do is continue on with our same back loop slip stitch rows. So no increases and no decreases. We're just going to be working into those back loops that we left for ourselves until we reach our stitch marker. Alright, so I'm back. I'm all finished up with my collar. I have made my way all the way down to my stitch marker stitch and now we're going to seam it all together. So what we're all going to do is make sure that our work is slipped wrong side out now because we want the seam to be along the inside. Then we're going to take a look at the amount of stitches that we have along the left side of our stitch marker and then we're going to count up the amount of stitches that we made for our collar. So for my collar I made a total of four stitches. So counting from my stitch marker stitch here is one, two, three, four and then insert your hook into that stitch. Then we're going to do a single crochet seam. So all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through everything, into the next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, single crochet, next stitch into the front, next stitch into the back, single crochet, and that's basically it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. Alright, so we are back. We have just finished up seaming our collar and the last thing we're going to have to do is just clean up our armholes. So let's all start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out and we're going to insert our hook into the stitch that's nearest to our side seam, insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now all we're going to do from here is put two single crochets into every side half double crochet row, one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then one single crochet into every stitch. We're going to continue that, making our way all the way up and over. Slip stitch into that chain space and do a chain up of one cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. Alright, so we are back. We have just finished up single crocheting along our armholes and we are all done. Last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!